Hello. If there's one thing the current coronavirus lockdown is forcing us to discover, it's how to keep the younger members of the family entertained. Children are bundles of energy. Enthusiastic, curious and relentless. Of course, the great outdoors can keep them amused, and outdoors is the perfect classroom to feed their hungry minds. Children are like sponges, absorbing the world that's all around them. Use this to their advantage, and yours, by teaching them skills that will last a lifetime. Here then is how to keep your little ones happy, healthy and educated using your garden. The obvious activity to begin with, especially in spring, is sowing. Get your little ones to help with this year's vegetables. If you have the space, offer them an area of their own, even if it's just a couple of pots. Help them to paint a sign to show it's their patch. Ask them to compile a realistic list of what they'd like to grow, then help them to start it all off. But, and this is important, let them do as much of the work involved as they can, so that they have a real sense of ownership over their space. This is absolutely the best way to keep them excited and engaged with the whole process. If you don't have a garden, sow something indoors. Sow microgreens such as cress or mustard onto damp paper towel. Move them to a bright windowsill once they've sprouted and keep them damp. They'll give something tasty to eat within a matter of days. How about a little biology? Teach your children how germination works by sprouting bean seeds in a jar like this. Roll up several sheets of paper towel into a cylinder, then pop them inside a clear, clean jar. Dampen the paper, then push some bean seeds that were soaked overnight in between the glass and the damp paper towel. Check regularly for signs of germination and observe the roots and shoots as they push through. Explain the difference between the young seedling leaves and the first true or adult leaves. Another fun project is to dig up and pot on a young dandelion. Dig up as much of the long taproot as you can and transplant it into a container of soil or potting mix. Give it a water, then move to a windowsill. Rather than being mown or weeded out, this way they'll get to see how the plant produces its flowers and seeds. Why does it do this? Can they guess how many seeds there are? And how would the seeds get dispersed? Send them out into the garden to look for bugs. How many can they find? What was it you found last week, Isla? A ladybird and a green shield bug. What can your little ones find? Help them report what they found on the Big Bug Hunt website. If they're feeling arty, get them to draw their favourite bug. Isla's having a go at a bumblebee. Try drawing from memory or use a photo as a guide. Don't forget to colour it all in. Hey, and don't forget to look after our six and eight legged friends as well. Try making a bug hotel. Find out how to do this in the video description below. It's a really fun project and you can use scraps from around the garden to fill it. Or how about this swanky bird feeder? It's very easy to make. All they will need is a plastic drinks bottle or milk jug, some scissors and some string to hang it up. Begin by getting them to cut out a hole in the bottle roughly 3 inches or 8 centimetres from the bottom. The hole needs to be circular or oval in shape and about 3 inches or 8 centimetres wide. Now poke holes into the bottom of the bottle so that any rain that gets in will be able to drain away. It goes without saying that young children will need to be supervised. Attach the string to the top of the bottle and fill the feeder with bird seed or nuts. Hang the feeder up in a tree off the ground so it's clear of the neighbourhood cats. Now get them to record what birds pay a visit. With any luck, it'll keep them amused for hours. Did you know that many kitchen scraps will sprout into new plants if given a little water? This includes the tops of carrots, beets, pineapple and turnip, as well as the stumps of vegetables like celery, lettuce and onions. Sit them in a saucer of water and watch them burst back into life. Another very satisfying project is to sprout an avocado stone. Take a wash stone, then push in three to four toothpicks around the middle of the stone like this. You want the pointiest end of the stone to face upwards because this is where the shoots will sprout from. Now use the toothpicks to rest the stone on a glass jar. Top it up with water so the water reaches the bottom of the stone, then pop it onto a warm, bright windowsill. Top up the water every now and then so the bottom of the stone remains covered. The stone will sprout within one to two weeks. 
Once it has grown into a sturdy seedling, transplant it into a container of potting mix. Exercising outdoors is beneficial for everyone, especially children. Get them jumping, bouncing, running, kicking, whacking, anything to expend just a little fraction of their boundless energy. Revive some of the traditional childhood activities too. Daisy chains are always fun to make, though save some flowers for the bees. Use wide long blades of grass to make a honking noise. Collect different flowers and leaves to press into an album, or build an outside den using blankets. That should keep them busy for a while. Don't forget the huge range of online resources as well, full of many inspirational ideas. We've listed a few of them down below. Tell us how you're keeping your children amused during the lockdown. Is your garden proving to be a handy outdoor classroom? Share what you're up to in the comments section. It's great to have you watching, it really is. Please stay positive, keep happy and healthy and of course continue to enjoy your garden. I'll catch you next time.